Criticade! Hey, babies. <laughs> Welcome to your favorite Friday morning Criticast. Yeah. Or whenever you're listening oh, to this yeah. cast. Whenever you get to it. Shit. We're on YouTube. We don't have a time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I haven't seen Jacob in two weeks. Yeah. Uh, uh, we we filmed this bit. very, very stressful series of episodes. The oh. Pokemon... Uh, second that playthrough. And they're, the, they're coming out right now for you guys. Oh, <laughs> so. it is. It's, I'm clearly stressed out. Yeah. And I want to say I, on the air. And yeah. I'll probably say this during Alice, too. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> like, I've watched a few of them back, and it's funny. But it's like, funny. We, I had I had some shit going on that day. Oh, okay. So I was like. Well, that's, you know what? That's really the challenge that we have. Like, no matter what, no matter what we're feeling or how shit we feel, we're trying to be funny and exactly. we're trying to have a good time. Uh, and for the most part, we, we pull it off. I think that like, yeah. e- even like the most tense, like recording sessions or like the, the, the most shit stuff that we've been through, yeah. we managed to be good and funny and like have a, a good time. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but. It, it's hard. <laughs> yeah, it, it, le- it leads to some moments of, of genuine just, stress. Yeah. Sorry, uh, I just hit the microphone if that picked up. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, th- those episodes are like, I don't know. They're tense, but we, we managed to have some good fun. I've started, uh, the thing I'm doing now is like when I'm editing, I- I'm picking clips uh, for a best of, for like the best of Thank the month. Thank goodness, that's good, because yeah. those get a fuck ton yeah, of views. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why are we talking about this? <laughs> <I'm here. laughs> No, well, Fuck, I hit the mic again. I'm sorry, I have a new <laughs> mic set up. We have a new... We have a new setup. A new uh, recording studio, even. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, we we record uh, at my mom's business, which I'm not allowed to mention. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I get a room there. And because of that, and because everything moved and everything, uh, we have our new... We have a huge studio it's now that's all to ourselves. Big. We don't uh, back up to a church anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Which is We're, good because we record on Sunday mornings now. Right. We used to yeah, record yeah, yeah. Saturday nights until that got to begin uh, a huge social issue. <laughs> yeah. It's also like it's also better. I mean, we mentioned on the last podcast that we're like both morning people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think it'll make for better episodes. Yeah, no, too. I feel a lot better. Yeah, I, I'm always more rested and shit in the morning. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so, so we do have a new area and a new a new setup and everything. So and we're probably gonna come at you with some high energy. Yeah. Yelling uh, <laughs> right Which next door good. to my fucking my uh, high school school district. Same, same with yeah, Jacob. The <laughs> or <laughs> don't bleep say it. it. <laughs> bleep, bleep just even that. But uh, yeah, the the Fuck. the school district area, like the uh, office administration building, is right next to yeah. us. And I have a I have a I have a teacher I look up really highly who goes there. Works there every day, so hopefully really? he doesn't come in on a Saturday and hear me saying "fuck" through a window. <laughs> well, it wouldn't matter because we record on Sundays now. Yeah, I said if he came here on a Sunday, he's heard me say "fuck" through a yeah. window. He's no, he'd be at church because he's a big Christian man. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so it doesn't matter. <laughs> and also, it's Sunday. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, uh, what have you been up to these past two weeks, other than m- moving shop? Move. I mean, yeah, like moving. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was basically I mean, it. I, I, uh, I. I was recarpeting and moving pianos and shit all mm-hmm. week, um, and editing. I I actually managed to edit every single episode that we have recorded. You did. That is that is <laughs> fascinating to me. Uh, it's just especially because of the period I thought you were dead. <laughs> there was that. That was when a lot of my work was happening. Yeah, there was um, okay. There was like a three day stretch. Yeah, where it was my birthday. I'm twenty. Yeah, <laughs> this is my per- the first thing we record when I'm twenty. Yeah. Uh, I I texted Jacob. Like two days later, because I got a Nintendo eShop gift card uh, with the instructions "Buy Mario Plus Rabbids." <laughs> uh, I was like, "All right, so we're gonna play that on the show because it has co-op maps." Yeah. yeah. Oh, does it? It does. Yeah. Oh shit! It has a whole co-op campaign. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So we're gonna play that. Cool. Uh, and I texted Jacob about it. Didn't respond. I texted him, yeah. hey, you okay, man? I've texted you something that you would normally respond to, and it's been a couple days. Yeah. You good? And then he didn't respond. Yeah. <laughs> then oh, I God. post a stupid fucking Crash Bandicoot whoa meme, <laughs> like, two weeks after it's relevant to, <laughs> to my fucking group chat that has Jacob in it. Yeah. And then he's like, yeah, baby, shit. And he's drunk. <laughs> and I was I legitimately worried that Jacob had died or something. No. And then he messaged me this fucking Crash Bandicoot shit. <laughs> well, okay. So what happened was uh, the, the the past, the week before this one, or I guess two weeks, I don't know, whatever. I worked like 70 hours for one week over that. Yeah, that's nice. And then I worked uh, uh, 
my my same amount of hours and then some more because we're still moving shit uh the the next week and i had no break so there was just one night where i i had free and i was like fuck it i'm getting drunk and i don't give a shit because <laughs> i need to be because I, I i just yeah I you was were playing dead. You hard i mean yeah i but i still like i have bruises and shit and i i broke one of my fingers <laughs> <What>? <laughs> Are you, i'm fine what the fuck whatever it happens is it and are you good can you play games yeah i'm fine it was it's just it was like it felt like it was broken. I didn't go oh, to a doctor or anything. Uh, okay. I, and it still hurts, but I'm okay. <laughs> Shit, all right, dude. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Whatever. I'm Irish. We, repl- we re- repress that shit. <laughs> I thought you were going to say, I'm Irish. When we break our bones, they just grow back yeah, immediately. Yeah, you know, the, the old Irish secret. <laughs> <laughs> you drink alcohol and, and then, then your re- wounds regenerates heal. you. <laughs> Fuck. Uh, yeah, but I did do uh, I did do something else uh, mm. last week. Early yeah. on, a couple weeks ago, I I beat Alice. Oh, really? By yourself? Yeah. Well, obviously by yourself. <laughs> yeah, was I? No, there? I gathered a bunch of my friends. <laughs> <laughs> did you record uh, new critic game without me? Was it on our profile? No, <laughs> no. So I I just I wanted because uh, my feelings after the last session was okay. A lot of this was us getting stuck and not knowing where to go. And yeah. it's frustrating to be like, I don't know what the fuck's going on. No. Where do we go? No, Jacob, I knew exactly where I was going. I was just too pissed off. <laughs> so I, I just kept fucking up. E- and even it was so. entirely on me. Even so. I, I kind of also wanted to finish it just to kind of be like, because we also, another reason I had was we skip over a lot of the cutscenes, And I wanted to be like, well, okay, this is what happens here. Just okay. like as a brief synopsis to Sounds catch good. everyone up if they, if they care. That makes relative sense. So yeah. So I just, I beat it and. How much? How far into the game we are we? Uh, there's there's three more levels, and Shit. and yeah, <laughs> and from what I can tell, there's only one that's about as long as the one we just did. Okay. And God, they're not hard. So you know. That's why I got to switch it up to Nightmare. No. <laughs> well, I, it doesn't seem to matter. It's like, it, it's just it's just the amount of enemies just, that come. Yeah, out. it's just yeah. the amount of enemies. But as we've said before, that doesn't really up the difficulty all that much. It kind of does because when mean, you get swarmed by enemies, you get fucked. I guess we'll 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 see how you feel after you get the next and last weapon. Yeah, I, I, if, you, like, if you guys uh, don't know what we're talking about, uh, watch our Alice series. Oh yeah, it's, go it's check one out. Of, it's one of my favorite series of ours. Yeah, uh, has some of our iconic Criticade moments, <laughs> like us screaming at each other. Us yelling at each other. Jacob calling Us. me an asshole. No, wait, no, that was, no, a different, that was, that was after Pokemon. Pokemon. That one, I listened back to that, and I was like, oh, man, that's uncomfortable. It's I don't think really people are going to like that. Yeah. Because <laughs> you can tell how honest it is. Oh, yeah. No, it's uh, it's real fucking... I, I was I was having a rough day. You were having a rough day. Uh, it was and Then we awkward. made a funny Let's Player scream. Uh, so here's <laughs> what I did the past two weeks. Yeah. I went to Columbus, Ohio, so any of you Criticade fans might have seen me there. Uh, did you just? I just finger gunned our our projector. <laughs> uh, I I had the best sushi I've ever had in my life. Oh, uh, nice. If you're in Columbus, Ohio, go to Akaihana hmm. or Hana. A- <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's either one of the two. Okay. Very delicious. Very kind of expensive, but it's worth it. It's for my birthday. Oh yeah. Nice. Uh, I went to the to the Columbus. Uh, Museum of Science and Industry, Cozy. It was nice. It was fun. I, I saw Elmo there. He was nice. Hmm. You uh, saw Elmo? Yeah, was, Elmo was painted on a wall. Oh, I hung out with him. Okay. <laughs> uh, I hung out with uh, Buster from Arthur, which is pretty sad because he just went through a divorce. Okay. Uh, I, I feel like you shouldn't say I hung out with when they're paintings. Yeah. That- <laughs> <laughs> it's a little confusing and or scary. I hung out Big Bird too. Okay. He's also painting on a wall. Yeah. Very sad. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Uh, I just I just pretty much spent the past two weeks with my girlfriend. Okay. Who I, I love dearly. If you're listening. <laughs> Why do you sound so insincere? You do. <laughs> I hate her. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, any Let's Player fans? I truly do hate my girlfriend. So there's still a chance for you and me. You know what I'm That's saying? That's not true. There's no chance. <laughs> Give up. <laughs> Come on, I can be your celebrity crush, right? Right? I open up my Saraha to my just fucking Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> That's just my honest real life one. I just I just sure. wanted to get more answers. Yeah, more uh, answers. Ninety three posts on my Saraha. 
zero zero mean comments. If you don't know what a Saraha is, it's like a it's like it's people send you anonymous messages. Everything everyone sent me was nice. I'm very popular. Nice. <laughs> 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 what are the chances that half of that is true? Zero. <laughs> <laughs> All of it's true. <laughs> Uh, okay, so uh, do you want to switch to the, get to the topic? Yeah, the topic of this this week, I guess. Yeah. Um, oh wait, wait. Was there, was there any was there any like video game news in the past couple weeks? Was there? I, uh, was, I don't know. I'm, have we I'm been Have think. we been together since San Diego Comic Con? Uh, I'll tell no. you some news that I'm fucking pumped for. Yeah. Darkwing Duck's gonna be on Ducktales. <laughs> He's coming back, baby. And if, and if he does well, they're gonna give him a fucking spinoff. Oh. Darkwing Duck's back, bitch. Cool. Wow, dude. <laughs> nah, I don't, that's uh, whatever. I fucking love Darkwing Duck. Okay, that was when you were a kid. That's not even. That was like. No, I I liked uh, I liked Ducktales and and you know it's just I don't I'm not a huge fan of reboots and and everything. Sometimes it, it goes real wrong. So uh, well, yeah, of course, you know, uh, but sometimes it goes really right. Some sometimes it does. So you know, we'll see. Yeah, I, I just, mean, it aired yesterday. Ducktales. Okay. Yeah, so I, okay. I've yet to watch it. Yeah, I was, same. I was at Parney's last night because it was Saturday night. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, but no, I, I I just, I try and avoid getting on the hype train for stuff like that. Because, oh, no, like, I'm just excited to watch. I'm not super hyped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I ignore the fact that I was yelling about how hyped <laughs> I was a minute ago. Just ignore that. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, I, I don't think that's it. I watched, I watched a lot of the movie trailers and shit that came out. Oh, for, yeah? On, during, for Comic-Con. Yeah. Yeah. That's Some of them okay. are all right. <laughs> Fuck, okay, let's get into the topic. <laughs> well, no, I just, like, Stranger Things excited me. Oh, yeah. Um, and fucking uh, Defenders. Yeah, whatever. I'm excited for that. I, I fell off the Netflix Marvel train Did a you? long time ago. I just couldn't yeah. get into Luke Cage, and then I never watched Luke. Iron Fist. Oh, and- man. Iron Fist is all right, ex- d- despite the, the hate controversy surrounding it. I, I have a big issue with TV miniseries that last 13 episodes that don't need to last 13 episodes. Like yeah. I'd say if Jessica Jones was 10 episodes long, it would be a perfect show, but it has issues. It but does. They are it. solely because Th- there are filler episodes. episodes. Yeah. Awful, awful issues. And they should just, and I mean, yeah, Luke Cage. I love Luke Cage. Like I love the first half of Luke Cage. Yeah. <laughs> and then, and then it just gets, and then it tiring. gets really bad. And like, Fucking Cottonmouth is a way better villain uh, than whatever the other. I copper... didn't even get to the other one. Oh really? Yeah. yeah. I just, I, it was no. too slow. It 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 is. And really I slow. love slow shit. So yeah. like I I, I mean take yeah. Slow shit. So it's, it's bad. That was bad issues for me. I I don't think it was bad. It's it's one of my favorites because I have a soft spot for Luke Cage. But uh, like, yeah, of course, of course. Uh yeah, objectively, like the the best Marvel one is is Jessica Jones. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think I, I think I have real hope for Defenders. I I do too. It is eight episodes. It is eight episodes. And if people say it's really fucking good, yeah, I'll probably give it a look. Yeah, I'll, I'll probably mean, have to watch Iron Fist first and then give it a look. I don't think Luke Cage is necessary to watch Defenders, right? Probably not. Because I, I know who he is you know, really well. You know who he is. <laughs> Um, there is some like I mean they go into his backstory and that's actually pretty interesting. I've seen his but a but you know his back. backstory. Yeah, exactly. So it's so, like yeah, I don't. Yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know Ted about if, if, Iron Fist. Though, if, so. <laughs> if you're listening to this and are confused, we are recording this before it comes out. Oh shit! Yeah, <laughs> this comes out after. It comes. Fuck! We shouldn't be talking about Defenders. Yeah, Iron sorry. Fist. I just realized yeah, that. Yeah. Whoops! Sorry, guys. So <laughs> we'll. Uh, Ignore that. We we recorded this yesterday for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I guess we should move on to our yeah, main topic. Our topic which is uh, uh, Assassin's Creed. Yeah. A uh, game series by Ubisoft Montreal, published by Ubisoft, uh, mm-hmm. and developed by Ubisoft. <sighs> yeah, that last one <laughs> gets some great ratings. Uh, so what what are your feelings on the overall series? The just overall like... series of Assassin's Creed is okay. Okay. It hits and misses. At, well, relative hit, hits and massive misses. <laughs> uh, and just dripping with potential that I think is just barely within reach and they just are too lazy you know to what for. i would absolutely that's that's my biggest problem with assassin's creed mm-hmm. is that it has it has so much potential yes and they squander they almost all it of it they fuck it up so, so bad it's like i mean it could be a really fun game and and like the concept is neat and the story at times is even cool yeah and and everything it's just 
God, do they suck at execution. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> and I, and this, this is coming out, uh, if you're listening to this in 2018. Yeah. Uh, we have not played Origins we have yet. Not Origins, played Origins is the upcoming game. Yep. Uh, we have, pl- hey, you played every single one. Yeah, yeah, yeah I have. Even the spinoff? Uh, not the spinoff ones. Uh, just the main series games. Yeah, I played every single every Assassin's single one. Creed game. Uh, uh, including the one for PSP, uh, not extensively <laughs> though. I heard it's fine though. Yeah, yeah. I heard it's just it's literally just it's Assassin's just, Creed one again. Okay, but like well, different whatever. story, which is fine, I guess, for yeah. a handheld. It's okay. I, I mean, I, Assassin's Creed one sure feels like a handheld game, <laughs> which is a segue. Well, wait, do you want you want to keep talking about the whole series? No, no, I'm, I'm going into I'm going into one. Okay. Uh, so like, Assassin's Creed one. It's it's an older game, like yeah, 2007. It's 2007. It's 10 so, years old this year. It, you know, to us that kind of does feel like a handheld game because, like, you know, it's it's got a lot of the same tropes and shit that yeah. that uh, handhelds use now because they have the same processing power and everything. Uh, it's it's just Assassin's Creed One. I was really impressed by where the series could go. I was like exactly. wide eyed and hopeful. It was like, it was like a beta for a really good game. Yeah. Yeah. It really was. And that's, um, and, and for me, I, I played it after two had come out and everyone like shat themselves over two. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and so I kept hearing about how good it was. And I'm like, wow, this series, this game is terrible, but it has some real potential here. Yeah. Uh, like, I don't know, but it brings up a theme for me in Assassin's Creed where it's like, I, I want the games to be good, but they keep doing things that are that are just wrong, in my yeah. opinion. I played Assassin's Creed. Assassin's Creed came out when I was 10. Yeah. Uh, and I had grown up with an original Xbox. So mm. all that kind of like prototype cinematic bullshit, yeah. that's the shit I grew up with. I yeah. didn't grow up with Ratchet and Clank or <laughs> Jack and Daxter yeah. or Mario or any of the cool shit, right? Sure, sure. I grew up with fucking... With the, uh, I don't even remember. There's bullshit that, on yeah, the Xbox. Yeah, th- that, that late, like... Like that era, 2007 to like 2011 has a lot of cinematic no, shit. No, I'm talking about like 2000 to two, th- like before Assassin's Creed. I'm talking oh, about okay. the shit I grew up with, like the proto cinematic stuff. Oh, okay. On the original sure, Xbox. Sure. That's what I grew up with. Okay. Um, so coming into uh, Assassin's Creed, it was, it kind of blew me away a little bit because I was really? like, I'd seen so many attempts as, as a young, younger person to replicate the the style of a movie and assassin's creed is the Uh. first thing to me that felt like it you know it felt like a cinematic (sighs) experience where you were controlling this cool movie character i mean i guess that that is the concept of assassin Mm -hmm. like the original concept of assassin's creed uh isn't uh you're in the past like right now assassin's creed is is basically um you go into the past and and you fuck around and shit but the original concept was you're watching an ancestor. You're watching yes. your ancestor do shit, uh-huh. and you can sort of control what he does. Yes. Uh, and and that was, I guess, that was what they were going for. Sh- should we go into the basic plot summary because that that has a lot to do with how it does. the game works? Yeah, 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 sure. So um, the go ahead. Assassin's Creed uh, is you play as Desmond Miles, uh, who is just a New York bartender, which uh, later you find out is not just the case. Right. Uh, uh, he's just a normal New York bartender who gets kidnapped by the biggest corporation in the world. Like, imagine Apple kidnaps you. Like, yeah. that's, that's what the, that's what the, <laughs> that's, that's pretty much what. It, yeah, yeah, they're based on Apple. <laughs> yeah, everything's yeah. white, everything's shiny. They're yeah. called Abstergo. Uh, so you get kidnapped by Abstergo, and uh, you're held up in their upper echelon, their upper floors. Yeah, and you're put into this machine that drags you into the past, and you're told to look for something, and you're not allowed to leave. Yeah. Um. And while you're doing that, you you flip forward between the past and and uh, the present. Sort of. Kind of, yeah. yeah and you try and uncover the mystery of why you're there, what the object is, what's happening, who this, what this company is, and why they're looking for that thing. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's the the future segments are really just a framing device for exactly. the past segments. And, and they some they they expound upon that in, in other games. I thought you could. Yeah. I swear swore in the first game. When you were Desmond, you could hack into the guy's computer and look at his emails, but you can't. No, That's you like can't. That's like I totally. <laughs> I was like, I, I was like, yeah, this is gonna be cool. I'm gonna walk around. But as as you yeah, continue playing in the past, you gain more of this ex- this ability that your ancestry has called the eagle vision. Yeah, where you you could see targets, you could see important things uh, in like a special highlighted view. Right. 
which is like the proto Batman vision. And that's, if you yeah, guys know what yeah, that is. Pretty much the detective vision shit. There's, there's like that. That's one of my problems with the series though. Like in the story of the series is that most of it is propped up on plot device, uh, plot devices that are just poorly, des- poorly con- conceived. Mm-hmm. Cause like Eagle vision doesn't really make sense. The, the idea that there's genetic memories doesn't make sense nope. to the extent that they use it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Uh, shit like that is, is like the wait, wait, worst. Wait, 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 explain that. Why, why, do you, why do you not think genetic memories make sense within the canon? Because genetic memories are real. Like, like yeah, the shit, like, I mean, yeah. you know, how, how, how salmon swim upstream, that's real. But they, they, they're like, they're saying that you can remember everything that your ancestor did by looking at their genetic memory. Yeah, but this is also a video game. I, <laughs> <laughs> I know, but it's just such a leap in logic. It's one of those things that make you makes you go, really? I mean, but they also really? have a upframing device of an ancient civilization of not aliens, but people who came before people, and that's the framing device of why this is all happening. Right. And and but, all, all the genetic <laughs> gifts given to the characters of the series are because that they're, and they're descendants of this specific well, family. Well, this goes into a little bit of my theory on uh, science fiction writing. Yeah. I, I think that if you try too hard to explain something in science fictiony terms, yep. y- you clash with reality a little bit. So the more you try to try to explain something, like I would have been perfectly fine if they said, we found a, a, a way to connect your consciousness to your ancestors' consciousness mm-hmm. through, through tachyons, which doesn't make sense. It's not real, mm-hmm. but it's just vague enough that I could believe it. Well, I don't know what tachyons are, and I, I prefer just to be like, uh, "This is what you can do." Like, I, I, I just that's prefer what I'm to have a framing device to get me into the game. But that's what I'm saying because, like, like in later Assassin's Creeds, they're great about that. They're like, "This is a machine that sends you into the past for, for your ancestor." But in the first game, they go really in depth, and they're like, oh, "They do because yeah. of genetics, you can go back and see everything that your ancestor did." And this is a real science term because geese do it, and I'm like. That's fucking stupid. Just let me use the magic machine to go back in time. <laughs> Fuck you. <It's> true. <laughs> so, so either way, you uh, Desmond gets it in the machine. He gets a big old boner for his assistant for the for the lab man's assistant. Yeah. Who ends up being an assassin? Uh, uh, who in ends dis- up being an assassin? Wait. Okay. We don't. Uh, wait. We haven't explained who assassins <laughs> are. So let's get to that in a second. Oh man. So you travel back in time. And inhabit the memories of your ancestor Altair. Last last name uh, that I can't <laughs> pronounce yeah, without probably yeah. sounding offensive. It's very Middle Eastern. It's well, yeah, because it's based off the Prince of Persia. It's, exactly. It's a, I mean, it's a good. It's the most diverse that that game gets for a long mm-hmm, time, mm-hmm. actually. Yeah. Unfortunately, uh, but yeah, it's. It's all based on like the real the real historical concept of assassins and where they come from and mm-hmm. the the real historical Templars, uh, which is their and the enemy group. Yeah, uh, that's trying to pull the strings on everything. Basically, ancient. If you don't understand, think of the ancient concept of of uh, the New World Order or uh, or the Illuminati. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. basically they are the yeah they're, they're, they're they the they are the Illuminati. New World Order versus the Illuminati is right. the story of the game. Uh, but it, they're called the Assassins and the Templars, and right. so the Assassins uh, honor uh, free, free movement, free thought, free world. Mm-hmm. The Templars are. Uh, control, making sure that there is law and there is order, and right. there are. There is good cases for both in the series, and that's not in the first couple of games. In the fir- in no, the first in the first couple games, of games, the uh, Templars are the bad guys. Yeah, yeah, because it's all like, hey, you're going to be free. But then in the later <laughs> games, like, they're like, what's the cost of being free? Right. And there's only like two games that really explore that, which is what, a shame. But they don't even do it that well. Well, I'm going to I'm gonna jump ahead for a little bit. To Rogue? Or? To, yeah, to Rogue. because they That's do- a game where you play as a Templar, the first game yes, of the series. But they squander that potential because... They've then been, they, ju- they just turn the assassins into a straw man temp- like enemy. Right. <laughs> they, t- they turn the s- assassins into a straw man enemy, and then the Templars aren't even that good. They're still like shit people. Yeah. It was like th- they build that game as like this is where you get to be like the Darth Vader type, like someone yeah. who was a-, a savior and then gets turned into a Templar. And then they're just kind of like. Yeah, but you're still kind of an assassin, though. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. And I'm like, this is this is lame. I want to go around and I want to kill 
like assassins and be like the bad guy, but they're kind of just like you're the bad guy, but you're not the bad guy. Yeah, it's, it's just a it, weird middle point. Like choose a lane. Yeah, I get that. But back to the I, first game. But yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, so so Desmond gets a big old Woody over his lab assistant who yes. ends up being an undercover assassin because the assassins are still around. Yeah. Obviously, the people who kidnapped him are the Templars. Yeah. Uh, then you go back in time and you play through the very, very shallow story that is Altair. <laughs> it's really bad. There, it's, it's, it's basically not a story. It's not really. It's a, it's a bad excuse for assassination missions. <laughs> exactly. Which is honestly fine by me i mean i'm glad yeah 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 like if for normal like for normal gameplay but like assassin's creed is, is trying so hard to be like a movie like experience yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. that it, it kind of ruins some of my my fun sometimes i mean that's the same shit that happened in the movie later we'll talk about the movie yeah yeah on. we'll talk about yeah. the movie <laughs> dear uh, god the movie god the movie <laughs> whatever next uh, so the, the the cool part about the gameplay of assassin's creed is there weren't that many open world games coming out at the time. Yeah. So you had this uh, really beautifully at the time yeah, rendered the time. out uh, Jerusalem and, and yeah. Uh, there was a couple a couple of it cities in the really Middle East cool. and, and Asia, and they were all super beautiful yeah. and and, and uh, realistic to maps of the time. And yeah. It uh, takes place during one of the Crusades. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I think it's uh, uh, whatever. It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, I don't one know of the which Crusades. One. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's. God, it's such a cool experience. And you go from like one of the Christian cities to one of the Muslim cities. Yeah. And it's like, God, there's and it's you feel so it. neat. Yeah. yeah and it's, everything it's feels super interesting. fucking neato. And that's God. Uh, and, and that's and as cool as it gets from then on out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the gameplay is really bare bones. You jump yeah. from building to building. It's the buildings are all flat. The buildings are all flat. <laughs> there's no curves. You run up buildings there's by barely any guards to... in that one too right yeah like because rooms? they couldn't render them out yeah <laughs> they didn't have the, they didn't have the, the space right. to like put all the guards on the map and even when they were around you could just the throwing knives you had were an instant kill mm -hmm. so you'd just be running but it would be cool when you when you're just running awesome. across buildings and then someone's like hey and then you just go <laughs> and just kill them and, <laughs> and it felt dead. really cool yeah, yeah it did and then he falls into the street and you hear people scream and that's really funny <laughs> yeah uh and then they they had a, a life mechanic so that your life isn't oh, just yeah. your life. It's it's you being desynchronized with your current self. Yeah, with with your memories. So, like, so like you're desynchronized with the ancestors' yeah. memories. So if you did something evil, you would lose a little bit of health. Yeah, because because that's now what or if you did just something that your character wouldn't do. Right. Which yeah, is generally exactly. just the evil thing. Yeah. Which I actually really like. I think that's interesting. It's a better system than what they have now where it's just like you can't kill that guy. Like <laughs> they just, <say. laughs> just like no, he didn't kill people. <laughs> you, and then it's like, don't if, do that. <laughs> if, if, you, if you kill people, we'll we'll kill you. We'll kill Stop. you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is that's not it's super a, fun. It's not. Uh, but yeah, Assassin's Creed One has it, it's the worst version of what I think is the worst element of the those games. What? Um, which is that you can fight your way through most of the assassination missions. Yeah. Yeah, they, so you, the, the whole thing about the game is sneaking around. Yes. Being a sneaky little sneak and climbing on buildings and stalking people and yeah. uh, following them and then jumping and, kill, ugh, jumping and killing them oh, or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, and, and that's like that's the fun part of the game. Yeah. But the, the game isn't designed to make you do that. The yeah. game is designed so that you just walk in – assassinate the first person you see kill a couple guards with your sword and then stab the guy as he's running away yeah there's not really a big punishment for being spotted no because you can just tank through all the enemies <laughs> you can kill everyone it's really easy <laughs> the combat in the game is really shallow yeah and you literally could just dodge over someone's head stab him in the back and then counter someone's hit and yeah. then counter someone's hit and then counter someone's hit <laughs> yeah. until everyone in the room is dead it's and just no dead. thought it's they they're trying to like use combat as a as like a, a deterrent. Yeah, a, a deterrent. Like you're incentivized to assassinate the guy because combat is supposed to be really hard and complicated, mm. but it's not. <laughs> so <laughs> what ends up happening is you're just like, oh no, I got caught. Okay, I'll just kill these guys and kill the mm. other guy. <laughs> I think I think the deterrent for not doing combat is that it's just not fun. I guess. <laughs> uh, but one of my favorite quotes from Mark Rosewater is players will do what they're incentivized to do, even if it's not fun. Mm -hmm. So like if, if the path of least resistance is, well, I'll 
just go in and kill those guys. Yeah. It doesn't matter that it's not fun. They'll, They'll still do, do it. it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's just to go it's, and do the thing. Yeah, just you're, you have a goal. You're trying to accomplish it the most efficient way possible. And that's then when, it. You, when you eventually get to the big bad guy that you're supposed to stab. And, and basically, I think, I think something that's really kind of fun about the game mm. is – Everyone that you kill, all of your big assassination targets yeah. that you're supposed to assassinate were real people who died at the exact yes. same time you killed them. That is really neat. By that's, assassination, which is super fucking yeah, rad. Yeah, that's, that's the kind of historical fiction that I want to see. Exactly. That doesn't happen and, and a they lot continue, in later series. They continue doing that throughout the series, yeah. but then they, they keep... As they keep going further and further into the future, they run out of people who die of assassination. <laughs> yeah, because nobody gets fucking assassinated. Yeah, it turns anymore. out that very few people were assassinated by hand knife in like the 1800s. Exactly. So <laughs> they have a little bit of a problem there. Mm. Uh, but I don't know, man. That's that's the gist of Assassin's Creed One for me. Like yeah. my problems with it. And it's just really shallow. I, I have one more more note. Oh, to sure, sure. Uh. All the villains in the game are like hyped up to be the biggest dick in the world. Yeah. It's like like you'll walk into a party and then like like you'll see this guy and he'll bump into some woman and be like, Oh, sorry, bitch. <laughs> and then they, he'll like fucking stab her in the face three times. Yeah. yeah. Then, like, they go really hard to like, make you cartoonishly like... silly <laughs> dad guess, which I like. I think yeah. that's funny. Even the fact that they're real people is still funny. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> they're just the biggest dicks. They are. Uh, God. Uh, so you want to kill them. But then when you kill them, they play like a year-long cutscene of yes. you talking to them after yeah. you stab them. Yeah. Even if you're getting chased by like, a million dudes. <laughs> yeah. They're just so that, like some of my favorite moments have come from that where you're just like, cause I've assassinated, you can assassinate people in different ways. Yeah. Uh, my favorite was that like, I jumped down from the rafters. I'll fight off like three guards and there's still five more. And then I'll stab the guys. He's running away. And then they'll just like, Oh, I am dying. <laughs> and like, you're very aware that there's still guards around you who are ready to kill you. <laughs> At what cost is freedom, assassin? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then you like you close his eyes, and then you say the Latin shit, and you're like, "I'm gonna die in five seconds." <laughs> yeah, there are like guards a million around. dudes. <laughs> it's really funny. Yeah, uh, it is. It, it's they do that the whole series, the they entire never series. Stop. And then in fucking Unity. I, to jump ahead for a little bit, I don't know why. You need like the tenth fucking game. By yeah, the way. yeah. <laughs> they change it so that it's like a hologram of the guy speaking. Like, oh, so he's still yeah. dying, but there's like a hologram who speaks perfectly straight ahead to you, and then you're like treat. That's. I feel like that's a bit of a reference to the first game because there's a button you can press that'll make it so that that like. Oh, while they're dying in your hands, you could change the camera so they're just standing up and talking to you. Yeah, but I. I don't like I that. I, I don't, just yeah. preferred holding them. <laughs> right. It's It makes it's me talking, very aware yeah. that I'm playing a video game. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know. <sighs> uh, yeah. So, yeah, that's, that's Assassin's Creed. That's Assassin's Creed. Creed. And those are the themes that, like, I don't like. Yeah. And, and a lot of this shit runs. Like, it keeps yeah. going. And one thing I could say about Assassin's Creed 2 is it's a great sequel. Mm, mm. As far as sequels go. Yes, it's uh, fantastic. It, it's aged, and honestly, it's a fine game. It is. It's pretty good. I'd say uh, it, it's my favorite in the series. Oh, yeah, easily. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I like Black Flag, but whatever. Okay. Well, well, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, Assassin's Creed 2. Uh, okay, the ending of Assassin's Creed 1 is really fucking funny. <laughs> <laughs> you, like, finish getting all the so memories, and at the fun. end, fucking Altair gets, like, this apple of Eden, yeah. which is, like, a mystical artifact that lets you kill people with your mind or whatever. Sort and of the rules are vaguely defined. <laughs> yeah, but on purpose. Yeah. It's like a mystery. Yeah. And then Desmond goes back into the real world, and then he goes back into his, like, cell room, mm. and then, like, he activates the eagle vision, and he sees a bunch of writing on the wall, and he just goes... What the hell? <laughs> and then the credits roll. <laughs> Cuts the black. Like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, like, like it didn't. It, it raised a million questions and didn't answer a single one in the first game. Yeah, which isn't good. It's not <laughs> it should really answer good. at least one question at the end of the game. Like that should be your reward. I, I think not more questions. Yeah, I, I think that I ended that game going, ah, well, fucking time to play the next one. Yeah, I'm glad I played. <laughs> like, I, I'm glad I played them all. In, in last in, year. Right, because, god damn it. Because Assassin's Creed 2 came out two years later. Yeah, and like, no wonder people were hyped for that game. They were fucking wondering what the shit went on. Yeah. Like, the, but the game doesn't really answer questions. Holy shit, does Assassin's Creed 2 bring some answers? Yeah, yeah, it does. 
uh, to its credit. It's it's uh, fantastic in that Narrative way. quality of Assassin's Creed 2. Uh, Lucy, the lab assistant that Desmond had the big boner for, that ended up being the uh, assassin, assassin secret agent, uh, sneaks Desmond out. They go on a, a fun little adventure to a new assassin headquarters mm-hmm. where she's like, we're going to get you a new... Uh, we're going to have to fight the Templars soon. We need to do a thing to we you that'll to give you. you the ability to fight. Yeah. So we're going to put you in the machine. <laughs> and because you fight as this guy in the machine, you're going to you're going oh. to remember how to fight in real life. The fucking bleed effect is another dumb, like, science fiction-y trope. I kind of like it. It's like... <laughs> It's just so stupid. It's like, again, it's like one of the worst plot devices. It's like, God, you're doing these things in the game, so it affects you in real life. It's better expanded upon in the comics and the books. Is it? Where the bleeding effect causes people to go fucking nuts. Yeah, but, yeah. Because they're like... They they'll be just walking around in real life, <laughs> and then they'll they'll suddenly like look down and they'll see their arm and it's get they're they're the assassin in the past, and then everyone around them is trying to kill them, and so they'll just start stabbing people, <laughs> and like like it's like a well, legit thing. Well, it, it's, that's fun. Yeah. Well, not fun, but you know <laughs> you know what I mean. That that makes sense. Like you're seeing things in the past. What doesn't make sense is Desmond's like, oh, I'm just a dude, and then he, like he goes in and he jumps around in a video game, and then he comes out and he's like, shit, I can do that too. I can jump and do flips. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, so I silly. don't quite get that. <laughs> yeah, it's like like your muscle mass still isn't there, buddy. <laughs> yeah. You, yeah. You don't have the the muscle memory or the training to do that. I I would really like to see Desmond like attempt to like jump from the rafters and then just like fall flat on his face (laughs) (laughs) that'd be really funny yeah but it it doesn't happen either way uh something that was a big issue with the first one was that altair had no personality no so you played as some guy who had nothing yeah and then you go on in assassin's creed 2 to play as one of my favorite characters in video gaming (laughs) Ezio the Tori da Ferenzi. <laughs> it's fun to say his name. Yeah, I know it's really fun. <laughs> uh, you, go, you go to my favorite period in history, the Italian Renaissance. It's really cool. Uh, and you you run around a, a pixel-perfect fucking Rome, Florence. Yeah. No, no, not, not Rome, Rome in the not first Rome. one. Yeah. Uh, Rome, Florence, you go to – where else do you go in the first one? You I go to a couple remember. places. Yeah, it's been a while. It's uh, been years since I played the second one. They're fucking one. sick, though. <laughs> they're, they're well-designed. So, like, you – you actually have roofs now, and you actually have guards yeah. posted pretty much everywhere, mm-hmm. uh, and tight ropes that go across from building to building, or like lines or whatever. For yeah, they're like clothes lines. Yeah, and so like, it's 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 well designed, and the streets are interesting, and the mm-hmm. buildings are interesting, and it's fun there's always to hop people around. around, and they're all yeah. dressed in Italian clothes. Oh, it's so neat, so neato, and they, they had like a million fucking weapons. Yeah, because like, in the first one, you just kind of had your hidden. Oh, wait, the hidden blade. We didn't talk about that. Oh yeah. Yeah, the kind of the main <laughs> thing about Assassin's Creed is is all the assassins have this this blade that's in a gauntlet on their wrists, mm-hmm. and when they when they flick their arm upwards, kind of like like a Spider Man, they their uh, their blade comes out and they mm-hmm. use it to just stab people really really covertly. Yeah. Even though it's very obvious when you stab someone yeah. with, with a sword, <laughs> uh, whatever. <laughs> as long as you pray like a monk afterward, every, yeah. <laughs> everything's fine. <laughs> <Shit>. <laughs> <laughs> so like the hiding mechanics in the game you can in the in the first few games you can stab someone and then hide somewhere and no one will be any the wiser like you can stab someone go hide in a hay barrel and everyone will be like the fuck just happened <laughs> someone stabbed this guy like one time i was playing assassin's creed 2 i did a running jump and <laughs> stabbed my target in the face yeah. and then hid in a hay barrel like three yeah. feet from me and yeah. everyone was like oh, oh, who did oh, that? what a mysterious assassin <laughs> <laughs> like it's so dumb <laughs> i mean i i get why people love it it feels satisfying it feels really to do satisfying to stab someone. it's just <laughs> it's so, just so silly. silly god uh, but things that they add in too are Ezio is a much better character he has a full oh, backstory yeah. where his his, uh, he's just an ir- irresponsible he's, young Florence teen. Yeah, he has one of he's one of the few characters to actually have an arc, to yeah. actually have a character. Or yeah, like he's a story. irresponsible and stupid, and then his family gets killed by the Templars, mm-hmm. and he devotes himself to the Templar Order, uh, or no, sorry, to the Assassins Order. <laughs> the Assassins Order. Uh, and he and he uh, 
has to, has to go through this big quest of growing and learning and mm-hmm. and becoming uh, and restarting and the Italian uh, assassin yeah. movement because it died with his Re- father. Rebuilding up his old like family mansion and yeah. like everything that that happened to him, and, and it feels cool. And, oh, and you like so him. Cool. He's he's cool. Yeah, he's, you care he's about charming. Him. Uh, he's l- relatable, likable. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's this one part where where you liberate a city, and he gives this whole speech because the whole game takes place over the course of forty years yeah. of Ezio's life, which is fucking sick. Well, not the whole game. Sorry, thirty the, years. The, the the whole three games. No, right? no, 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 no. The first game, yeah, the first game takes place over forty years. Then the second Ezio game takes place over the course of one year. And then the third Ezio game takes he, he's place over the He's not 50 by the end of Assassin's Creed 2. He is. He, he, he ends... No, he's not. He ends the game finding uh, the staff. Yeah, and he's 50. He's not fucking 50, I'm, is he? I'm not shitting you, dude. His his character model doesn't change. He still looks like he's 17. Well... But he's 50. I, I Are am, you sure? I am wanna, not shitting you. Okay. Uh, if, if anything, oh. he, it might have been 30 years, and he's he's at least Maybe. in I'll, his I'll look it up. I just, it's been a while, so I have no idea. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to... Either way, the game takes place so over surprising. a very long time. Yeah, yeah. So uh, you get to you get to see this, this man grow into a... a adulthood and and grow uh, an empire of his own Mm -hmm. and it's really cool and all all the while desmond's story has been highly overhauled uh and it and it just you kind of just like everyone better yeah Uh, yeah there's there's better characters they introduce you to more assassins in the present day who become recurring characters throughout the series who are i like them i can see why people wouldn't but i like them Uh, i like some of them Mm -hmm. i i think that they're a little bit flat as characters like some some of them just have a bit and then that's it. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, then yeah. It's like, why but would you include they an entire even get better that? in later games? You know, they do, they do a little bit. Mm-hmm. So, either way, the gameplay. Yeah. Uh, uh, in in concurrency with with the whole everything's in uh, uh, Renaissance Italy. Yeah. You are running around having a having a wonderful time, and everything feels better. Like, there was a lot of times in the first game where you try and jump between a building and the game just wouldn't let you. Yeah. <laughs> now in Assassin's Creed 2, if you try and jump between a building and you uh, miss you just it, you just fall, can fall and die, <laughs> and it's your fault. But yeah. you can make the jump. It's up to you. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, which Combat is, is so much better, If uh, which is kind, uh, of, kind of an issue. It's, it's improved. Yeah. Uh, it's not great. I think it's the best it's been in the series. It's best, that, yeah, for sure. But it's still, it could go way farther. Mm-hmm. And the fact that it doesn't is what disappoints me. Mm-hmm. But now you could do, you could do grabs. You yes. Could do, you could do throws. You could do, you could juke them out. You could kick, kick people with heavy armor to, to stagger them so you could throw them or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, you could use the environment. You could throw, you could throw an enemy into like a rafter and the rafter will break and they'll die. Mm-hmm. You know, you just have a lot more options on <laughs> on how you kill people if you get spotted, which. Is also it's kind of an issue, but you also have more ways to escape if you get too crowded. You uh, the s- smoke bombs are new. Uh, there's more ways to assassinate people. Like in the first game, you couldn't jump from somewhere and kill someone. You couldn't do an air assassination, which shocked me when I played the game. I could have sworn in the first game. I could have sworn that you did because I did kill people from the rafters. Uh, I mean, I might be for remembering this wrong, but I'm pretty sure in the first game, you cannot jump from somewhere and kill someone. I mean, I played this about hmm. six months ago. So. Okay, well, I, I remember I don't that know. shocking me. Uh, so. it, it, it's possible that I killed someone from the rafters by jumping down, not giving a shit, and then stabbing someone in the back. Mm-hmm. I just remember that I did, that was my favorite way to kill people, even in the first game, because mm-hmm. it's just so much. Either way, one of us is wrong. Doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't uh, matter. Uh, in, in the second game, you get two hidden blades. So now you could do double assassinations, which feel really cool. So, yeah. so you there's a party where there's like two guards or whatever, and and you walk up and you just do you extend your arms, your full wingspan, and just stab them both, <laughs> and then just continue walking. And it yeah. feels so fucking rad. It does. Uh, and they add a gun later in the game. You uh, you have a hidden blade gun. Okay. So you you hold out your arm full full length and shoot someone, mm-hmm. which feels really good. Uh, and it, it's a really efficient way of killing people, but you take obviously takes a long time to reload. Right. So you can't rely on that. It's just like if you're trying to get that good assassination or start off uh, a panic, that's yeah. what you do. Yeah. Uh, did you find out whether? Yeah, uh, I found out the the Assassin's Creed Two must must take place uh, of the span of twenty five years. Twenty five. Because he's forty by the end of the first game. Oh yeah. The so first game that he's in. You're right. You're right. It was. Yeah. It was. It was. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. And uh, then by the last. 
But the last game, he's like 70 or 60, something yeah, he, like he's, that? He's in his early 60s. Okay, yeah. Or late 50s. Yeah, something like that. Because he's, he's, he's very older. aged, but it's also Italy and the past, so aging <laughs> happens earlier. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so he's fucking, he's old as shit. He's old as shit by the last game. So that's that's kind of the basics of, of Assassin's Creed Assassin's 2. Assassin's Creed 2. It's, it's so much better. It's a lot more fun. Also, there's a lot more mission variety. In the first game, you just kill people. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in the second game... You know, you, there's missions where you like follow people or like ride, which that's an issue. The following yeah, missions aren't fun, yeah. but it's it's still a step in the. It's a step in the right direction. There's ones where you ride carriages. Yes. Uh, there's there's ones where you where you help out uh, Leonardo da Vinci carry some shit or whatever. <laughs> there's missions where you just kind of talk I mean, to people. And th- that's a good idea, but like so many of the missions just aren't fun. The yeah. assassination missions, at least they're they're clear. You know what you're trying to do. Uh, a lot of the issues with the following missions is you don't know when the fuck they're going to end and you can't control the pace of them. So you end up just being like, is it fucking done yet? I don't care what they're talking about. I honestly found the missions in Assassin's Creed 2 to be really short. They are. Yeah, sorry. When I'm when I say that, I'm I'm re- referencing the fact that they bring them back for the rest of the series, and a lot of times they're just really long cutscenes that you're forced to follow along with. Okay. Yeah. Uh, in in two, they're not that bad at and, all. And two, you care about the characters, so it's not yeah. that much of a struggle. <laughs> and, and Later usually, games have issues where they just have shitty yeah. Characters. And usually you're not trying to listen to a conversation. Usually it's just like this guy's sneaking around and you're following him. Yeah. And so it's like it's it's fun. You're focused on gameplay and, mm-hmm. and seeing him and shit like that. And he turns around. Around and you're like, oh, yeah, and you like dive behind a building. <laughs> yeah, it feels cool. In, in in like in later games, they have like an audio system where you have to stay within a ring and then you have to listen to the cut, like listen to them talk. Yeah, and they go slow as shit and they're not gonna see boring. you. So it's just the follow missions end up being the worst part of it. <laughs> yeah, Creed, the whole series. Yeah, uh, but for for now, when they started them, they're not that bad. They're like a step in. Mm-hmm. They're an okay. They're, step. they're a step in the right direction for the series. Yeah. So the next game was not Assassin's Creed Three. Uh, no, which is an issue. Get a get a little naming anachronism here, because the next game <laughs> is to Brotherhood. Is Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, and there is an Assassin's Creed Three, and yeah. we'll get to that. But the next game is Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, which is a <laughs> mega <laughs> step back from yeah. Assassin's Creed it's Two. It's so bad. The it, graphics are way better. The graphics are way, way prettier. Better. Uh, you just can o- so dumb. Yeah, you oh, can run God. around only Rome now. In the first game, you had like four cities you yeah. could go to. Yeah. This game, you could you are only in Rome, <laughs> and Rome isn't that interesting. No, it's, <laughs> it's not. not cool. It's not. It's cool to see the landmarks. Yeah. But there's so many of them, and they're, and they're not scattered. designed for a video game. Because in in in, <laughs> in the in Assassin's Creed Two, the cities were scale, but. S- kind of small yeah so yeah. you run around the cities you you see all the landmarks and you're like oh yeah sick i'm in italy in yeah. this game you're like <laughs> they have to make it a whole game so rome is just really fucking big right and you get to like the outskirts of rome and there's just like you build an aqueduct yeah like, what Who i mean cares? it's like it a lot of it ends up feeling like because rome is a little bit touristy mm-hmm. it feels like being a tourist in rome yeah. and it's like there's the Colosseum, but like you can't do anything with that for a game. So it ends up just being a giant model that they stuck in the, like the middle and you're like, yeah. Oh, it's the Colosseum. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you can't and do anything with that. The Desmond parts are the same exact shit as the second one. Like yeah. barely anything's changed. It's, I don't even remember uh, them. The end of Assassin's Creed two, the final <laughs> fight. It's not amazing gameplay wise, but no. contextually feels great. The, yeah. It, it's they, they really, they built up the, they built one up the, the villains so well. Yeah. Yeah, it's a real pope. Yeah, it's a real pope. It's the, who the last boss of the game. And, and, he, and he's the guy who killed your family at the beginning. Right. And it it feels awesome. Oh god, it's so cool. And it all ties yeah. in with this shit. And there's a part where this ghost appears to Ezio and <laughs> she speaks to Desmond. Yeah. Like she's like, you're playing the game and she starts out speaking to Ezio. Right. And then she turns towards the camera and starts addressing yeah. you directly. Which and is, that is fucking sick. Oh, man, that is the coolest that that story gets. <laughs> yeah, pretty It's much. all downhill from yeah, there. Yeah, they, they over-explain <laughs> that shit way hard. Yeah. But it feels really fucking sick in that second game when suddenly oh. that ghost is talking to you, the player. Yeah, and, and you're like, holy shit, there's more going on and there's, like, the, there's a thing and they care about everything. And then they just... They ruin it with yeah. all the god shit and mm. the, I don't know. So the second game is or, or the mm. second game of the second the game. The second second game, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Brotherhood is more of the same but shittier. Mm-hmm. I don't they scaled back the combat 
to yeah. how it was in the first game. Yeah. For no reason. I, I it don't wasn't know. It wasn't good anymore. I, I guess they thought that it was too complicated. It wasn't, but it wasn't complicated. It wasn't. It was really well designed. And then they're like, no, 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 no. More of the first game, please. They added restrictions back to the climbing. Yeah. So it doesn't feel so free-flowing anymore. Right. Which is stupid. Which is really stupid because one of the main parts of that game is Rome Towers, where you have to, like, take over. Like, it's like a climbing puzzle. Yeah. And with worse climbing controls, it feels really bad. And you're supposed to want to collect these things that just aren't fun. And to the do. story is relatively inconsequential. Yeah. B- there's one important thing that happens. Basically they spend the whole game hyping up this villain. It's like the, the villain is to the degree of the same exact villain from like, like one of like the Assassin's Creed one villains Yeah, where there's like 10 of them. Yeah. And like- all dick bags. <laughs> but then it's just one guy in Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. That's like this big douche. Yeah. And you're he- just like, they hype him up the whole game and then you kill him. And it's like, whatever. He yeah. Wasn't like he's just a hyped up political leader. Who's a dick. Kind yeah. Of. It, yeah. It was, it was, he's not a satisfying <laughs> main villain. In the last no. game, you fought the fucking Pope <laughs> who <laughs> killed your family. Yeah. You really care about killing this huge dick in the, in the, in the second game. But in Brotherhood, it's all just like, it's all political. It feels like, uh, it feels like, um, uh, a new, sorry, one of the star Wars prequels, um, where they just, they over explain the politics of the situation mm. and it doesn't matter. And one cool feature that they did bring into Assassin's Creed brotherhood is the brotherhood system, uh, which the game is aptly named after because ah. you, you recruit other assassins into your order and then you send them on little missions uh, that happen in real time, and you train them up. And then at any point during the gameplay, you summon them, and they go in, and they just um, they just help you in a fight, or they'll go in and assassinate someone, and then the guards will chase them instead of you, so you can continue. Yeah, I guess it's it's okay. Again, a theme in the Assassin's Creed system. If they had taken that concept and expounded upon it, it would have been good, but. What ends up happening is, is well, the worst part of that system is the fact that you send them on missions and you don't really get to control anything. Mm-hmm. You're just kind of like, there's like a brief text box that explains what's going on and you're like, this guy, go and do this. Mm-hmm. And then yeah, it doesn't that's feel it. personalized, no. No, uh, the, the part where you can summon them and train them and like they're your friends kind yeah. of thing is cool. But in later series, they kind of just reduce it down to like, Nameless, send these guys, <laughs> yeah, send this guy on a mission. And it's just, it's not fun. Um, it's efficient. But it feels it gets cool your, as shit to summon them. It feels cool just, to sh- summon them. but like They just run in and they just, <laughs> just clean up in front of you and you just continue walking. Yeah. I love that. That is, that's a lot of fun. Again, they don't bring it back. Yeah. Uh, and, and Well, they bring it back in a few games, but it's not. But it's not the same. It's not the same. They, they hollow it out. For whatever reason, Assassin's Creed loves to introduce something that has potential and then just reduce it to its worst parts. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, I like that. And and actually, the Brotherhood part of the story for Brotherhood. That's, that's the it's, important it's part. It's the important part. At the end of the game, Ezio becomes the Grandmaster of the Assassins. Yes. And it, it feels like the past two games had been leading up to that moment. Yeah. And it feels fucking sick, dude. Yeah. But, I love it. <laughs> that's really the, the best. That's the only reason to play Brotherhood, really. Like, like it. And you stand in front of the, the, the Brotherhood, and they everyone does a big chant in front of you. Yeah. And they, and they you know, it just feels really cool. Yeah. Like, it's fun. You, you, feel, you feel awesome. You yeah. feel like you I feel like you, you earned worked, it. Yeah, you worked your way up through the Assassin's I mean, because you played, like, at least fucking 20, 25 <laughs> hours of uh, Ezio at this Yeah, point. yeah. Uh, and that's pretty much it. That's Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. That's Brotherhood. It's, it's just they strip down a few elements from Assassin's Creed 2, make right. it a little shittier, add a, one cool element. <laughs> um, that yeah. they'll strip down later. <laughs> that they strip down later. And the next game is Assassin's Creed Revela- Revelations, which I believe <sighs> is a step up from Brotherhood, but Do still you? a step down from 2. I, I believe that it's a, just a step... I, I believe it's just a step backwards from Brotherhood, even. Yeah. So um, this is Assassin's Creed, the fourth game. Yeah. Uh, but it directly precedes Assassin's Creed 3. <laughs> um, be, and the reason for that is because you're still playing as Ezio. Yeah. But Desmond's story is still continuing in the background. Right. So if you go, if you jump from Assassin's Creed 2 to 3... It makes no fucking sense. makes no sense. fucking sense. Yeah. And that's what I did when I was a kid. Did I you? I didn't get it. Oh, yeah. Of course I, not. I started to play Brotherhood, and I was like, this game sucks. And then I bought 3. I was like, this is going to be great. No, 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 no! It doesn't make any. It <laughs> doesn't make sense. sense. So also, it's time, a bad game. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll get to that. I think yeah. it's okay. Uh, I think it's better than you do. Yeah. Um, I think so. Uh, Assassin's Creed, Revol- Assassin's Creed Revelation, Revelation. You yes. play as uh, Ezio as this old fucking 
coot. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Desmond's story is pretty much nothing. Like basically, he's trapped he's, in the in the machine. Yeah, he's in a coma for most of it. Yeah, uh, no, so. he's in a coma oh, for all game. of it. Yeah, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. yeah shit. There are really cool bits uh. where you finally explore what his past was. Yes, and his relationship to his parents, and they are in this super fucking cool puzzle game. Yeah, they're, and that they're, part's sick as shit. Yeah, they're cool jump puzzles that they actually took time to design, and they have they have really cool visual cues, like yes. like they, they for like the story, like like Desmond will mention a train. Uh, just as like, because Desmond's doing an ongoing narration as you run through these puzzles, right? Uh, and Desmond will be mentioning a train, and the blocks you're moving on will be moving like a train, and then yes. you see on the side little streaks as if you're like in yeah. a subway. There's like projections of your memories on the walls, so but it's you all see, like, kind of vagueish. So if you if you're not looking for it, you'll kind of miss it. Yeah, it's, it's really cool visual it's storytelling. Really neat, super red, best part of the game. Uh, <laughs> uh, so yeah, good that they added fair. DLC for that moment yeah. <laughs> for those yeah. mini games, which oh, was God. so silly. Yeah, that's uh, dumb. The game itself is Ezio uh, has to do some contrived plot things so they can tie him in with Altair. Yeah, and then they have to add in a shitty Altair storyline. Yeah, and pretend that people actually give a shit about Altair. Right, because they it... keep doing that because, but no one cares about no Altair one cares about he had Altair. no story yeah people give a shit about Ezio. that's why people <laughs> fucking run yeah but uh, a lot of the story doesn't even take place in italy does it no it takes place it's in italy, no it in, doesn't take place at uh uh in italy at all it takes place in constantinople yeah 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 uh and and so a lot of the charm from like the italian renaissance buildings is just gone yeah it's, it's mostly it's kind of like dirty shacks and stuff y- y- dirty shacks and uh huge fortresses that are actually reminiscent of real fortresses, which yeah. means you can't climb them, which yeah. makes them boring. <laughs> exactly. But something I think that's cool is they give uh, Ezio this claw thing. Yeah. So you have a neat. little extra reach when you do jumps, and you have to press a, another button prompt. So it kind of gamifies climbing, because it's kind of climbing in, this, in the game is you run forward it's, and hold A, and then you just climb everything in your path. Well, there, there, there's some very... Uh, this is one point where we disagree. I, I think that... Uh, like in two, there's still a there's a game to it. Yeah, no, I agree. In but, two, there is. Yeah, in two, there is. Um, but I don't think that extra button commands is is the way to fix Assassin's Creed's climbing system. I think there there, there are ways to gamify it, and I think there giving are. Ezio a thing that you have to press an extra button to do kind of gamifies it a I, little bit. I think that adding an adding an extra button isn't the same as adding a mechanic. So. Really, all you're doing is adding an extra step to moving forward and pressing A. You're just adding adding forward, pressing A, and then pressing Y. So it's not really it's not mm-hmm, the yeah, same thing. I guess. So uh, I, it's a it's a again it's a good, neat idea to try and fix something that they know is clearly broken, but they're just not. We're way over. <laughs> uh, wait, what, what time is it? No, no, no. We're, it's it's fifty seven fifty seven minutes. Okay, then, so, we, then we'll wrap it up after we'll Revelations. wrap it up we'll, after we'll, Revelations. We'll do the rest of the series in the next. Episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just, God, the climbing in Assassin's Creed is so broken. Yeah. Like it, it felt cool in one and two because it's something you've never seen before. Yeah. It was new. But then at this point you've done the climb <laughs> and you realize it's just running forward. It's just running forward. And it's not, it's the same as just walking forward, but you're going upwards and it's not that fun. <laughs> right. Uh, especially in a lot of when you're like jumping on the rooftops, the most efficient way to get around is the rooftops because there's no people up there mm-hmm. uh, and it's just clear and flat. So what ends up happening is you're just running and then pressing A occasionally when there's a gap. Yeah. Um, and Ezio's story is kind of boring. Uh, oh, and re- yeah, and Revelations. Yeah, he just goes to Constantinople and he finds these Kills artifacts. <laughs> and then he... Uh, he uh, tries to he tries to go into this vault that Altair locked up, and Altair is yeah. like the fucking like Jesus of assassins. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Which is like why no one gives a shit. <laughs> he's, Come on, guys. he's not. Yeah, he's not cool. He wasn't even really. I don't know. He he wasn't even really that cool of a concept. No, I mean the assassins were, but and he was just kind of like the most assassiny assassin. Mm-hmm. But like, it doesn't make him a cool character. Yeah. I like. I kind of like how they retroactively added in shit about him being kind of brash in the first game. Yeah. But, like, they didn't do it in the first they game. They didn't do it so in the first game. They just, so it put feels, it, they just say that he did. Yeah, it feels like someone trying to retcon something. Exactly. Like, th- how do we make this character interesting? We'll add more shit, and maybe it'll be interesting, but he's, mm, yeah, he's no. not. Yeah, it's it's an issue. Yeah. Uh, uh, and I don't know why they keep harping. If they want to hark back to a character, do Ezio, and they don't really. 
a big issue. Yeah. When we talk about the movie, I have a big <laughs> point about that that really pisses me off. Yeah, and the games, I think the games do it a little bit more. Um, mm-hmm. Especially, I think three, well, actually three tries and separates itself from the rest of the series. Yeah. But it tries to be a jump in point, but it isn't. Because it's, it's, it's it relies so on the fact that you played all of the rest of the game. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Something that I like about Assassin's Creed 2 is the story is summed up in like a paragraph, and they do that at the beginning of the game right. perfectly. You don't miss anything if you just jump into 2. Right. The concept is really all that you need to explain for an Assassin's Creed game. Like, Assassin's good, Templar's evil, what? And then you go around and kill people. <laughs> exactly. But they they have to add in their huge fucking story. And they, they do yeah. things in later games that are just like, whatever, fuck it, you're just in. Uh, yeah, but yeah. at this point, it's uh, like... At l- this point, they... Because they, a lot of people quote like when they say they like assassin's creed they quote the story is the thing that they like and i get that Mm -hmm. but like that's i kind of dig the story but i've I've read into it i mean it's it's complex it's it's complex but that's kind of a problem for a game because games don't lend themselves to Mm. uh, episodic storytelling it has an extended universe uh, yeah comics it has a movie it has books and that's that's great i mean if you want to tell a story comics and books are the medium to do it yeah 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 so (laughs) and the assassin's creed comics are for the most point, pretty good. I like them. Yeah. I, I'm not caught up. But okay. There's there's a really uh, cool series that's coming out right now called Assassin's Creed Reflections. Okay. Where it's one shot stories that add in little plot details about uh, characters um, uh, because it's the 10th anniversary. Yeah. Yeah. So like their first issue is about Ezio, <laughs> and it, after Brotherhood, uh, Ezio's best friend is Leonardo da Vinci, and they yeah. really really work on their their. Their friendship. Relation. Yeah, they have a very good relationship. Uh, Leonardo is very caring to Ezio. Ezio loves Leonardo. Mm. They're best friends. Every time they're on screen together and you're with them, it feels nice. I love them. I love it's, their dynamic. It's great. It's it's the best in the series, especially because most people know who Leonardo da Vinci is. Yes. So they didn't need to like try and explain what he is like a lot of the problems that Assassin's Creed has with its story is they'll introduce a historical figure and then they'll spend like a long time like. Explaining like who it explaining is. Explaining who yeah. it is. Because, like, you're not necessarily a history buff if you play Assassin's Creed. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so they they have that problem. But everyone knows Leonardo fucking da Vinci. So Yeah, so making him a centralized character to the plot is just smart. awesome. It's yeah. smart, yeah. <laughs> and um, so in the, in the Reflections comic, uh, it basically, you never see uh, da Vinci in Revelations. Or there's a little short movie that takes place after uh, Revelations that details the events of Ezio from that point to the day he dies. Okay. Um, like, like you watch like him as he dies. Yeah, yeah. Which is very good. It's uh, uh, if you play if you have played Assassin's Creed Two Brotherhood and <laughs> Revelations, mm-hmm. I highly recommend you go on YouTube and watch Assassin's Creed Embers. I should watch that. Uh, it's anim- its animation style is really kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, I like it a lot. I think it's super fucking good, cool. and it's sad. Uh, and it's, it's just a good plot. Yeah. Uh, and it's a good wrap up for Ezio's character and it's really sad to see him die. Yeah. Um, um it's just, it's just, I, I don't know. They, 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 they need more of that. They need more of like a character who typifies the, the time period that you're in. Yeah. Um, and my God, have they tried they, and they, they keep, they just keep so failing. <laughs> they, every character that comes out, they're just like this is the new Ezio. And it's <laughs> yeah, like, it's no, not, no, no, they're not. God, it's just so boring. I mean, they like suck. The, a lot of the, a lot of Assassin's Creed problem is that they, they do a lot of, uh, one of my favorite TV tropes, character shilling. Oh where, yeah. You, where you're just like, this character's amazing. Oh my God. You killed that guy. You're the best ever. And it's like, no, he's fucking not. I've played characters who are cooler. I lived it. Yeah. <laughs> and like, uh, they, they start, We'll, we'll get into this later, but there there yeah. are a few characters that, that are, seem really cool, <laughs> and then after you get past the prologue, they just have they're no just character not. anymore. They're just like, yeah, oh fuck, this is gonna be the new Ezio, and they're never, <laughs> they never fuck, they never get Ezio again. No, they never capture. They, they never do it. The the strength of that character. I think there are times where they kind of get close, and I think they're getting better with it, and I have high hopes for the next one. I I I, I don't think they even come that close. There are no, times when there's close. like there's like shadows of what what that character was mm-hmm. in the future, but like. I don't know what happens. It, it, I don't know what happens in Ubisoft. I think they just like forget things that work and they're just like, oh, fuck. Well, I'll try a bunch of other different shit that might not work. Mm-hmm. And it, it has varying levels of success. And that includes storytelling. Oh, it's some shit I like about Ezio. 
is is a character trait about his that I like a lot mm. is that he's very respectful. Like yeah. when when he kills someone, it's clear that he has respect for all, all any good things that they have done or or for their just their success in yeah. general. And so whenever he kills someone, he shuts their eyes, he lays them down to rest and he says rescue re, re, what was it? Is rescue? I don't know. It's Latin. It's uh, it's it's Italian. <laughs> Uh, it's not Latin. I'm pretty sure they do the Latin thing for for two at least, because they 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 continue in Rome. They spoke Latin. Did they? Yeah. Well, in, <laughs> during the time period. Well, pretty in, sure. Well, but, not in Rome. It's not. They're not in Rome. They're in, in Italy. Well, yeah. Well, either way, he uh, says it in some Italian-ish language. <laughs> he say he gives. He's like, rest in peace. And yeah. shuts their eyes and lays them down. And like, it, it's all. You know, when Altair kills someone, he's just like. Ah, fuck you! I don't give a shit what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> but, then, but but you could tell Ezio is always listening. Well, the the cool part, I mean, Altair uh, was like, "Fuck you! I'm angry at you because you did bad things." Ezio was kind of like, "This guy was politically my enemy, was kind of a dick, but he did do good things mm-hmm. for people." So they really acknowledged the grayness of of being an assassin and being like, "Yeah, this might work out for my favor, but this is." kind of also a little bit fucked up because this guy did do good things exactly and and that's a it, it adds to Ezio's story every time very he kills strong someone. character trait of yeah Ezio. uh that's never really <laughs> brought up again uh i think they get i think the closest they ever get is in assassin's creed 3 but if you want to know what we have to say about assassin's creed 3 i yeah. think you guys are gonna have to tune into the next the episode next of credit cast yeah uh, i hope you guys enjoyed it uh if you guys are big assassin's creed fans let me know i i'm a lot bigger of a fan than uh than jacob is he yeah. hates them but uh, i keep playing them so yeah. like <laughs> there's something that keeps him coming back so so what what the the thing that keeps me coming back is is like the potential that it has and like how frustrated i am that they never get, like they don't do the things that i want them to do that's true so like <laughs> i say i'm not a fan but i have played through the main series and mm-hmm. and been like fuck why and you better believe i'm going to have some thoughts on origins when it comes out <laughs> cuz that i mean we that game cuz that I'm it's been 2 years up. it's been 2 years since yeah, the last since, assassin's creed since, game cuz they were just it. like they said they were just like Oh, uh, this this game series is going downhill. <laughs> we can't keep releasing these games yearly. Yeah. So we're gonna set a separate team to go work on this movie for a year, mm-hmm. and then our game development studio is gonna work on an Assassin's Creed game for two years. And that's the first time in a while. The last game that they worked on for two years was Assassin's Creed Two, which was the biggest revolution for the series. So I have really high hopes for Origins. I am a cynic, so I I don't I mm-hmm. don't think they understand. Are, are you gonna buy it day one? Yeah, probably. Me too. So we'll we'll have <laughs> well, thoughts. Well, maybe not day one, but like as soon as it, mm-hmm. as soon as I can when it yeah. comes out. But yeah, well, okay. See you guys next. time. Yeah, we'll time. see you guys in the next episode. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please subscribe. Uh, please leave a, leave a like in, down below. Leave a comment. Tell us tell us what you think of Assassin's Creed. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and more Let's Player shit. Whatever. Fuck you. <laughs> I'll see you in the next episode. <laughs>